Welcome back. I hope all of you are doing great. In this video, I will discuss about one of the most common array techniques that is carry forward technique. These techniques get repeatedly asked in most of the company interviews. So first thing is I will discuss one question and I will explain the algorithm in that. This question was actually asked in Goldman Sachs. And the next couple of questions, these questions were asked in Google, Amazon, Facebook. So without further ado, let's get into the problem. In the first problem, though you might be knowing the answer, please do listen uh, to the approach of arriving at the solution because it will help in developing the intuition behind this particular approach. So whenever you are given a problem related to this approach, you will directly arrive at this particular approach. In this problem, you are given an array and you have to find the elements who is greater than all the elements on its left. For example, if you take 6, is it greater than all the elements on left? Yes, it is. Similarly, is 3 greater than all the elements? No, right? Because we have 4 which is already greater. Similarly, is 7 greater than all the elements on left? Yes, it is. So, we have to return an array or we just have to print all the elements that are greater than its left. So, what is the brute force approach that comes to your mind? So, at every point, we can just go to the, this point and we will check all the elements on its left and if it is all the elements are lesser than this element, yes, we'll print the element. If not, we'll just break the loop. For example, if you take this 7, you will iterate from this point to this point. And since all of them are lesser than that, we will print 7. Similarly, for 1 we will do is 4 lesser than 1. No, right? So we can just break the loop. So this will be the approach that we can use. That is the brute force approach. But this is not the most optimized why is because it is it will take n squared time let's again look into the problem and look at what are we recalculating for for example you are doing here 7 or maybe you are doing 9 here right so what are you doing here you are checking again from the first element till this element but if you look here we already print 7 right what does it mean it means that 7 is greater than all the elements on its left so, if you know that 9 is greater than 7, why do you want to recalculate all the elements from the beginning? So, that is the main idea. That is to store the optimized solution. Is the main idea behind carry forward. So, what do you do? We will just store the maximum element. And if this element is greater than the maximum element, it will automatically be greater than every other element on the left, right? So, what is the approach that we will follow here is, we will just store the maximum element and if the current element is just greater than the maximum element we will print the maximum element so by this way we are able to reduce the time complexity from n square to just n so what is actually carry forward technique right so you will just store the optimized solution and the optimized solution at any given point is equal to the optimized solution until this point or this point has the capacity to change. This can be anything, not just the maximum. This can be anything, but from this point onwards, your answer will either be the same answer or it will continue to change. So that is carry forward technique. Let's get into the next problem. So in this problem, you are given just letters or characters and all of them are uppercase. For example, you are given this character array and what you have to find is, you have to find all the AG pairs that can be formed. How many AG pairs can be formed here? 1. This A can form with 2. Again, this can form with this. So, how many pairs of A and G can be formed? And this is not a valid answer. GA is not a valid answer. It has to form AG. So, how do you calculate? So, one is the approach is that. At, do you have a you will just check all the g's in the future point so this a can form with three different g's so we will keep the answer as three next we will go again until we find one more a and what how many ever g's are there further we will just add it to the answer so there is just one so three plus one four pairs can be formed but again let's look at it in a different way and try to optimize what we can do right instead of looking at a can we look at g right so we look at g like in the similar to the last problem 
we look at G and we will count how many A's are there prior to that. There is only one A. So it can only form one pair. Similarly, this G can also just form one pair. But this G can actually form with two A's. Right? So what is the idea here? We will just keep track of the count of A's and whenever every G comes, we will increase the answer by the count of A's. So what are we doing here? We will have the track of count of A's and we will have answer. We will iterate from 0 to n. If at any point, if the character is A, we will increase the count of A by 1. And if the character is G, what do we do? It is similar to forming pairs. We will just increase the count by how many A's are there. So by this approach, you will be able to reduce the time complexity from n square again to n. And there will be uh, no uh, constant space complexity since we are not using any extra space. So the next problem, this problem is actually asked for me also many times in my interviews. And this was also asked in Facebook and uh, Amazon also. In this particular problem, you are given an array of stock prices. For example, 715364. What is it that you want to do? You have to maximize your profit. That is, you want you can buy it on one day and you have to sell it on another day, but you have to maximum your profits. For example, you can buy it on the first day and you can sell it on the third day. So what will be your profits? You will actually be in losses, that is minus two. Similarly, you can buy it on the second day and you can sell it on the fifth day. So what will be your profits? Five. So you have to maximize the profits, right? So what is the first approach that comes to your mind? The first approach that we can do is actually this can be problem can be solved with many different approaches, but I found find this approach to be the most intuitive and the easiest approach. So one of the brute force approaches for every point you can calculate the profits. For example, if you buy on this day, right, what will be your profits minus six? Do you want minus six? No, because you can buy it, buy it on seventh first day and sell it on seven. Your profits will be zero. You, you never want minus six. Similarly, if you go at any point, your profits will be negative. So uh, that will not be that. Similarly, you can choose this as the buying day and you can calculate the profits. But this will be order of n square. The another approach that we can do here is we will choose this as the selling day and this one as the buying day. For example, if you choose this as the selling day and for 0 to till this point, you can calculate the profits. If you buy on this day, will you have any profits? No, right? Similarly, if you buy on this day, you will have two profit. Similarly, if you buy on this day, you will not have any profit. So for every point, you will just calculate the profits from 0 till that point of time. Similar to the first problem, what is the redundancy here? We are recalculating it. So what is the only thing that we have to keep in mind is the minimum, whatever is the minimum. If you can buy it on the minimum day, why do you want to buy it on any other day, right? So the approach is you will just keep track of the minimum until that point and you will just subtract that minimum. For example, if you have six here, you know that minimum is one. So why do you want to buy it on three or five? You will just buy it on one. So the idea is you will keep track of the minimum and at any given point, the profit will just be equal to that minus the minimum or the minimum will change. So this will be the pseudocode for that answer. And the time complexity will again reduce from n square to n. This is actually a dynamic programming approach. And this algorithm gets frequently asked in many company interviews. Thank you for watching the video. Please do like and subscribe.